I grew up snowboarding some of the biggest mountains in the back country. Injuries were common and I ended up I ended up rupturing my L4 and L5 and then shattering my shoulder and pinched a nerve in my neck over a period of three years. So I, I became deeply addicted to pain medication as a functioning addict. Over a two to three year period, I started taking Oxycontin. I got taking like eight pills a day and my teeth paid the toll. I had a tooth removed and got a strep infection in my jawbone. And two months later found out that the strep bacteria had gotten in my bloodstream and it infected my heart. And so the cardiac surgeon when I was in the hospital said I've, I've never taken a patient in for heart surgery that's taking this much pain medication. We need to withdraw him and we're going to need to remove the source of the infection. So I had all of my teeth removed in the hospital and I was put in withdrawals and two days later my heart stopped in the cardiac ward. And the cardiac crash team came rushing in my room. I was still conscious but it, it was, my body was shutting down so I, I had been sick for so many days that I didn't know I was having heart failure. And that was the first time I was conscious for my heart stopping for 30 seconds of a full flat line. They did the heart surgery and I survived and got down to two or three pain meds a day. And in celebration, four months after the heart surgery, took my mom whale watching out of Lahaina. And I stepped on a fish hook, got staph in my foot, and my liver and kidneys shut down. So when I collapsed three days after stepping on the fish hook, the EMTs told my mom, we need to get him to the hospital now. We don't mean to scare you. He has sepsis. So I've never been in an ambulance. It's gone that fast across the island. And I was conscious for that, but I lost consciousness a couple hours after being admitted to the hospital. And I was in a 17-day coma with total liver kidney failure, lack of, it wasn't an infection that took the limbs, it was lack of blood flow um, while I was in the coma for 17 days. And that's when this whole journey of learning how to adapt to, I was right-handed, um, how to do everything with half a thumb, half a pinky, and learn how to walk again, um, started 2012. I had been trying out for the Paralympic snowboard team, so I had incurred some injuries and started training and rehabbing up at Deep to Peak. I was on the edge of making being an alternate for the team, but I kept injuring myself and was just right on that injury line. So they rehabbed me and I ended up getting pushed into a wave at Lani Apoco. And a week later I went to Costco and bought a wave storm and then came to the gym and said, I bought a wave storm, I want you guys to teach me how to surf Hokipa. And I'm sure they're like, oh my gosh, this, this kook, like who? Everybody goes to Costco and buys wave storms and wants to surf Hokipa. But I just showed up and kept doing it. I think that inner athlete in me kind of has found that spark that's what, what's in your heart is stronger than what's in your way. And whether it's my own mind or what's going on with my body has got me stuck, just getting through it. Just like, just knowing that showing up for myself and actually like, there's such a huge reward that moment when you show up for yourself and you put just that little bit in. You just gotta like take the initiative. And by the end of that first summer, I ended up competing at Duke's Fest and the ISA World Championships. And that's when I made the Hawaii surf team. And the next year I traveled to Bali, Japan, Europe, got to travel the world and compete.
there's a healing that happens in the ocean. I might have been at my lowest possible state for a, a few times just being on the water's edge and not even sure of myself for paddling out with the sound of the waves and there was that moment of just like asking the ocean I mean I used to ask the ocean to just help me because I, I felt so powerless with being an amputee and my depression and PTSD and um, I'm bipolar and there's a clarity that I, when I come back and out of surfing even if I only catch one wave and I fall on five waves that um, it's just being in the ocean I've, I've never experienced that level of like healing from the state that I was in before I paddled out to who I and what I'm, energy I'm bringing back to the world when I come in so yeah surfing's that like healing that just happens.